Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about all the news and information surrounding Battlefield Hardline, the next Battlefield game that is going to be officially unveiled at E3 on June 9th. Now if you want to watch the footage in the background, I've got a 48 Little Bird kill streak. Our team is down by almost 300 tickets and we're going to turn this game around. So if you haven't been keeping up with the news, there was a massive leak about the next Battlefield game. Uh, which was then followed up about a day later by an even bigger leak of an internal trailer that EA made showcasing the game for internal use only. This is a seven minute long trailer and it pretty much shows off all the features of Hardline now. EA's done a pretty good job about removing this from YouTube, but there's a lot of other sites out there that unfortunately for EA uh, have not taken down the trailer yet. Now in response to this massive leak, EA has had to essentially come out and announce the game officially. They haven't revealed the game in terms of like showing off gameplay that they want to show to us, but they have made a landing page and given us a little bit of information on it. The site indicates that Hardline will be coming out for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One and PC. Now normally this sounds like great news and uh, I know I'm going to catch some flack for saying this but basically my understanding of the way the Frostbite engine has been working with Battlefield 4 is that whenever you see features that look like they're scaled back or maybe things that didn't make it into the game that you're like why didn't DICE just do this instead of that? Often the reason is because of limitations based on the older generation consoles. So I'm hoping that the gameplay in Battlefield Hardline is not limited too much by old gen consoles. And obviously I would like as many people to be able to play Battlefield Hardline as possible. But I also want to make sure that the series is capable of evolving and expanding to uh, new technology and making sure that the netcode is in top shape and uh, handling some of the higher level tick rates and all that kind of stuff. Basically I just want what's best for Battlefield Hardline and as few limiting factors in the development process as possible. Now let's talk about the trailer a little bit. Unfortunately I can't post any of the gameplay but I can certainly talk about what I saw and talk about some of the interesting features. One of the things that I think was pretty recognizable is that it definitely looks like it's the Frostbite engine for Battlefield Hardline. That shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone considering that the Frostbite engine is being used on so many games now, Star Wars Battlefront for example, I have a feeling this engine's going to be here for quite a while and luckily DICE and EA have made it clear that CTE is designed to not only help out Battlefield 4 but to help out future games using the Frostbite engine and I believe there are going to be a lot of other community test environments not just for Battlefield but for other game titles as well. Now in the trailer we saw a lot of vehicular combat but not tanks and APCs, more along the lines of police cars, motor motorcycles, uh, vans, and you'll notice that uh, there's moments in the trailer where people are sticking their heads out of car windows and shooting like RPGs and stuff like that. Now generally speaking the passenger seats in vehicles in Battlefield games you can't really do anything but th sit there and kind of hope that your driver doesn't take you off a cliff or something. In this it looks like you have a much bigger role in actually defending your vehicle potentially taking out other vehicles as you're driving by. So essentially drive-bys are going to be possible in Battlefield Hardline. Footage was shown of the grappling hook where players are climbing up onto ledges, it even shows a sniper on top of a water tower, and they indicate that it's going to create a lot more chaotic gameplay. Now when I heard this in the actual trailer, I was kind of like, you're saying that as if it's a good thing. I thought we're trying to get away from chaotic gameplay, at least that's what I'm trying to get away from in a tactical shooter. You don't want chaos, you want predictable paths, you want the ability to strategize. So it's making me a little bit nervous when they say something like that in a trailer. Granted, it wasn't intended for public release. Uh, there is also a zip line. So there's a sequence where there's like four players zip lining across from one building to another. I have a feeling that's going to be tied in with the crossbow that was shown as uh, one of the weapons in the leaked info. I don't have as big of an issue with zip lines. It's mostly the grappling hooks that I can see being somewhat game breaking. There's also a lot of information on the new game modes and when I say new information again this trailer was six months old so this could all be old information or things could have changed but uh, the heist game mode they show essentially the thieves robbing a bank uh, there's big firefights going on there's a huge bank vault and then they try and get away on motorcycles at the end so I'm very interested to see how that game mode 
plays out. They also have a hostage rescue situation where the police obviously have to infiltrate some area being defended by the thieves and get some hostages out of there. They also have um, some very cool looking gameplay of a game mode called Hotwire that shows a lot of uh, essentially transport vehicles zipping around the desert and you're shooting RPGs and machine guns at each other while you're chasing each other around. So it has something to do with uh, a chase game mode. It could be very similar to Obliteration in Battlefield 4 because the intention of that was to have fast-paced, intense gameplay. A good portion of the trailer focuses on some of the single-player plotline and some of the single-player gameplay. I'll admit it looks a little bit boring to me, although one of the nice things that they said about it is that it looks like there's a lot of different ways to achieve your objective rather than just going through a very linear narrative. It looks like most of the levels are designed so that you can approach it stealthily, you can come in running gunning, you can uh, be a detective, I don't know. It seems like there's going to be different ways to approach things, which is good because some of the few single-player first-person shooters that I've really enjoyed are ones that give you those kind of options. Um, Crisis, for example, the original Crisis, you could really go through and uh, approach any combat scenario in any way that you chose. And that was really fun and it added a lot of replayability. Now, if this trailer is six months old, some of the information from it could be incorrect, like I saw an AUG in the game there, and uh, that wasn't really leaked in the weapon stuff, but again, the weapon list that was leaked seemed pretty small, so I imagine we're gonna be seeing a lot of repeat guns from Battlefield 4, and if the AUG is in the game, that's really not gonna be a big surprise. Also, there was a very, very brief moment where you see a weapons list of uh, certain guns that have not been un unlocked yet, and there is a price tag next to them. Now, I don't believe this is a real world money price tag. Obviously, the, the price on the guns was $1,000, more than $1,000 for some of them. So it looks like there's gonna be some sort of in-game currency in which you can buy the guns that you want to unlock rather than just going through the standard progression. Now I could be wrong about this, this could be a single player only feature and you can choose what guns you want to have for the next mission or something like that and you earn currency throughout the missions, but uh, if it is a multiplayer feature this is going to be very cool because uh, kind of being locked into what weapons you unlock in a standard progression of things can be a little bit annoying, especially for players who don't have a ton of time to play and you want that really good gun and you just can't sink in enough hours to rank up to the max level to get it. Well, then this could be a nice way to really reward you with that good gun if you just want to go all out and get your Ace 23 or whatever Uber gun you're really trying to get. Now, there's been a lot of really weird news surrounding this whole leak fiasco and recently somebody was fired from EA, not for actually leaking all the trailer info and stuff like that but for uh, leaking some other info on there where he said that DICE was actually doing all the multiplayer for this game and that Visceral was just doing the single player. None of this has been confirmed and DICE has not actually made a statement towards the matter but the guy was fired for saying so. Um, frankly, just saying anything about the game online uh, if you're an employee there is a violation of the NDA so regardless of whether or not what he said is true, it is a fireable offense. So um, the guy complained about it a bit on Reddit but as for what this means to us, nothing has been officially confirmed. It does seem to make sense though. Visceral has experience making single player games, telling a narrative. Uh, DICE has a lot of experience with the multiplayer side of games. So, you know, why not break up the two companies and let them do what they do best? So now that the cat is out of the bag, EA has decided to make Hardline available for pre-order on Origin at $60 for the base game and then $70 for a deluxe version of that game. Not really sure what deluxe entails because um, premium, generally speaking, has been a bit more than uh, the base value of the game. It's usually been like $60 more uh, than the game, so you end up spending about $120 for the game and then the premium package. So if deluxe is the same as premium, then that is a crazy good deal, but I have a feeling it's not going to be the same thing. Now, amidst all this craziness surrounding the leaked information on Battlefield Hardline, there's also been some very cool information surrounding other Battlefield titles. The first of which is that Battlefield 3 is free on Origin until June 3rd. If you don't have Battlefield 3, go get it for free on Origin. Seriously, it's, in my opinion, the best Battlefield game ever made. And it's amazing that EA is deciding to release it for free for this time period. The servers are crazy full right now. So if you haven't played BF3 before, now is a perfect time. You literally have no excuse unless you don't have anything that can play BF3. That would be the only excuse not to get it. And then in other news surrounding BF4, EA has allowed players to purchase battle packs for a set 
fee. It's like a dollar for bronze, two dollars for silver, and three dollars for a gold battle pack. And I guess I shouldn't really be surprised, but people are exploding about this on Reddit. And let's be honest guys, this doesn't affect the core game in any way whatsoever. Somebody's not going to spend a hundred bucks on battle packs and have some sort of crazy edge on you in the battlefield. It's certainly not turning Battlefield 4 in a pay to win, so I really don't understand what everybody's upset about. It's not forcing you to buy battle packs. I'm certainly not going to buy any battle packs. It's just an option there if you would like to. So as far as the leaks surrounding Battlefield Hardline and a six month old trailer, I'm remaining cautiously optimistic as I pretty much do about any Battlefield release. Certainly there's going to be a lot of hype, a lot of big features promised and stuff like that, but it really comes down to the multiplayer gameplay, whether or not it's fun, whether or not it works, and uh, I'm going to reserve judgment until I get to play it. So I guess we'll all have to wait till around June 9th for more information. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off. <laughs>